All right, so I'm gonna tell you the benefits of the program first, just Let's to turn it. you up real fast. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. So Come on. You get no closing costs, mm. no down payment, no agent or attorney fees, the lowest interest rate in the country, with the option to buy it down lower, regardless Crazy. of what your credit score is. Regardless of what your credit score is, 580, 600, 540, it don't matter. It's more about your credit profile than your actual credit score. Okay. So if you got a decent DTI and you can afford to go pay your rent, NACA's theme is if you can afford to pay rent, you can afford to pay mortgage. Thirty-eight percent. That's the amount of entrepreneurs that are struggling to get their business funded because their personal credit isn't where it needs to be. Now you can look into alternatives like corporate credit cards and vendor accounts, but the truth is the easiest way to get access to five to six figures in funding is to have good personal credit. As an entrepreneur, the stress of trying to build a successful business is already enough as is. So why work harder than you need to when you can simplify the funding process by getting your credit restored? My company, Takeoff Financial, has served hundreds hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you by helping them avoid the pain of getting denied for business funding by restoring their personal credit and we want you to be the next one. So click the link above or below this video to secure your free consultation and let's put you in position to get you funding that your business needs. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the Marvin Francois Show, your number one source for all things business, finance, and investing. And today huh, is a very special day because our guest today is an author, father, public speaker, entrepreneur, and a real estate investor. He's one of the premier faces for a program known as NACA, which is helping aspiring homeowners all across the country secure their first property with little to no money down. And although the acronym NACA stands for Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America. It should actually stand for Nobody's Advocating Consistently as Andre because this man Max. has made it his mission <laughs> to tell every man and woman yeah. under the sun about this program. And today he's here to do more of the same. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with the one, the only. Mr. Andre Haynes. What's going on, family? My dog. I like that introduction. You, know you just turned me up with you know that one. Not the, not the whole knacker. We changed the name. I yeah. like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Nobody man. advocates as consistently as Andre. I had to, you know, I had to roll the red carpet yeah, off like you, family. That. How are you, bro? I like that, man. I'm good, man. How you doing, man? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Invest Fest weekend is yes, hot. Sir. Yes, sir. But, you know, we here. We came, came on here to give the game on top of the game. I said, look, I got to make sure I get my guy on here. Yeah. I love everything that you've been about. I love everything that you've been doing. And I was just extremely excited to connect with you because... I've had a lot of individuals come on here and talk real estate and they've done tremendous jobs, but your space that you occupy, that you're essentially become the face of this program, yeah. it's nothing like I've ever seen. And I yeah. said, I got to give the game to my people as well. For sure, man. I so, so I said, I, I'm going to bring the, the man, the myth, the legend on himself. Thank you. And going to tap into it. So, you know, I did a decent job of introducing you, but of course, nobody knows Andre Haynes better than Andre Haynes. Right. So for those who aren't familiar, let's mm -hmm. get them familiar. Uh, let the people know who exactly is Andre Haynes. Um, I always start off with this same introduction to myself. Um, it's pretty consistent. My name is Andre Haynes. I'm from the South Side of Chicago, the Ida B. Wells Projects. I don't come from any financial literacy, all mainly government assisted, Section 8, EBT, food stamp, stuff like that. And, um, you know, me getting here has not been an easy journey. I've dealt with a lot of, you know, childhood trauma, um, drug addiction in my family, adoption, all of those things. But, man, God has been good in giving me grace and showed me all the things I can do and become regardless of those circumstances, man. That's it. That's it. I love it, bro. Yeah. I love it. And then essentially, you know, like you said, coming from Chicago for, from where you came up into where you are now, I'm sure it's been a hell of a journey, right? Sure. Let's let's unravel that a little bit more so people truly understand everything that's led you to get up to this point. Because right now you are the face of one of the premier real estate programs, the NACA program, mm -hmm. but it wasn't always like that, no. right? There was a journey for you to get there. So walk me through what exactly was your introduction into real estate? My introduction to real estate um, was, of course, you know, younger in the hood, you know, you got a couple of different examples of folks getting money. Of course, you got, you know, athletes and entertainers. You got the people that's in the streets. And then you have these guys, you know, the older guys always be clean, have almost similar images as drug dealers. But you will hear people say stuff like, yeah, he own a couple of apartment buildings on the north side, or he own a couple properties, or he doing this, or he doing that. And that always intrigued me. Um, and that was my first introduction to real estate. And then um, after that, one of my aunts, she purchased a beautiful brownstone on the south side of Chicago, which was the first example of somebody in my family that I saw buy a multi-unit. And uh, my aunt lived for free. 
you know what I mean? Okay. And you know what I mean? The tenants in the property pay her mortgage. And I remember her explaining this to me. And mm -hmm. um, she still owns that building right now to this day. I think she bought that building maybe 25 years ago. And since then, the neighborhood has changed drastically, grown drastically. She's probably up $800,000, $900,000 in equity, easy in that place. You know Crazy. what I mean? Just for owning it for so long. And um, she probably has to pay it off as well. So that was my second example. Then my third example, um, I have a mentor of mine, uh, actually the person who introduced me to the NACA program. Her name is Kyoki. She's a broker. And um, I was going through some hard times at one point in my life and I needed some work. And she was just like, man, Dre, you can come and assist me at the, you know, real estate office. And, you know, I would do, you know, administrative stuff, paperwork. She even put me through real estate school. This was probably in 08, 09, like when the market had like crashed real bad. Mm -hmm. So she had to kind of like, um, you know, shut down her you know business and kind of start over. But she she put me on and uh, just really introduced me to real estate and the power of real estate and, you know, how beneficial real estate was. Gotcha. And yeah. then from there, you were rocking and rolling. Now, I know before that, because I did a little research, I know you come from, me and you have similar backgrounds in that before our transition into this world of entrepreneurship, you come from an entertainment background. Mm -hmm. I come from an entertainment yeah. background. So you, before you got into entrepreneurship, you were a artist. Yeah. I was a uh, comedian. Okay. Talk a little bit about that because I know that based off the research I've done, obviously things were not necessarily going the way that you wanted it yeah. to. And you reached a point in your life where you knew that you had to make a bit of a pivot, which is ultimately on top of the assistance you got from Kiyoki. Shout out to her. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that as well? Man, um, the music thing was something that, you know, I felt like would be my easiest way to get wealthy. Because, you know, in our communities, as I said, we don't have a lot of examples. You got athletes, you got entertainers, and you got drug dealers. That's right. it. That's who we pretty much look up to for the most part. I figured out at a young age, I was not going to be an athlete. I knew this because two of my friends ended up going to the NBA. When I got to high school, these guys were drastically better than me. They had Coach K, Tom Izzo, Bill Self, the best college coaches across the country coming to see them play. I did not have these same people coming to look at me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Too? Like, I knew then and there, like, all right, cool. This ain't going to be my right. path. Like, you know what I mean? Um, in addition to that, man, it was just... <clears throat> Me understanding that college and typical education weren't like my thing either. So I really mm -hmm. had to kind of like figure something out and like go on a path and like find myself. So I thought it was going to be rap because after, after sports, what's the next easiest and best thing? Rap. I can come up with some words. I can rhyme. I got a look already. Like, you know what I mean? I got right. swag, all of these things. So it's not going to be hard for me to become a rapper. And mind you, one of my other close friends, he's a producer, co-signed on the beat. This dude has sold... 40 million records worldwide, Justin Bieber, Rihanna, Big Sean, you name Crazy. it. Crazy. He was making my records. I could not get a deal. Still couldn't you know get a deal. Still couldn't get a deal. Golly. Like, I had NBA money behind me, NBA push behind me. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's my man's. Like, man, rock with him. All of these things. Songs on the radio, all of this. I could not break through, bro. Like, mm -hmm. and it just, and again, I tell people all the time, it just wasn't in God's plans. You know what I mean? Um, it was just, you know, preparation to get me to where I am now because I talk about it all the time. Like, even with me speaking at, you know, Invest Fest on Saturday, me doing those performances, opening up for guys like Young Jock, Fat Joe, it just prepared me for stuff like this. I don't have a single nerve going on this stage, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, in front of half a many thousand people. I've been there. I've done that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I've performed in, front of, in stadiums, all of these things before. So a lot of times when we feel like things aren't going our way and the things that we're going through are just like really bringing us down, you have to change your mindset and look at it like, man, what's the lesson that I'm supposed to get out of this? Mm -hmm. And um, once that became my mindset, everything shifted, bro. I stopped being a victim. Yeah. I stopped like, you know what I mean, blaming my job and, you know, my lack of being successful in music, you know, as, you know, pain points and, and using those as excuses. And I took advantage of, after I stepped away from music, I went and got a nine to five job and I took advantage of that job and realized that these checks are what's going to help me qualify for a mortgage and anything else that I'm trying to do. Because in order to invest and do anything, you need some type of capital. Thanks. And people hate their jobs, et cetera. But your job is what's going to provide you with the capital until you're able to take that capital that you invested and turn it into more money. Right. And once I made that mindset shift, Oh man, I woke up every day happy. I went to work on time every day. I went to work and did overtime. You know what I mean? I started picking up every single book I can read on real estate, psychology, um, just all of these different things that just helped my mind grow and just made me a much more well-rounded, stronger individual. And um, 
even just money books, man, rich dad, poor dad, money master the game, like all of these different things that just helped me get my mind right, bro. And after that, bro, it was just like, it was up. Like my, I had a purpose at that point. I realized right. that I had a purpose, like, and it was to get myself together so that I can go and help other people get their selves together because I knew that there were so many people who had circumstances just like me. Like they call it the top 1% for a reason. That's because 99% of the people ain't there. Facts. Like you get what I'm saying to you? <laughs> and most black people ain't there. Like That's you get facts. what I'm saying to you? And I see it and I know it because I've been through it. Mm -hmm. I've been in situations where I know I'm talented. I know God has something in me. I know I'm special. I know I'm one of them dudes, but it's just like, what? like, what is it that I'm missing? What is it that like, what is it that I can do different? What path can I go on to where I can reach, you know, and become the person who that I'm supposed to be, man? And um, it's a it's a journey, but the minute that you begin to look at the journey as a lesson, mm -hmm. as opposed to a punishment, oh man, it becomes beautiful. That's perfect. It becomes beautiful, man. Yeah, I want to dive more into that because, bro, you just you just said a lot. I got <laughs> I got I got to unpack that, and I want to start off from like you said, you kind of get into that point. You were pursuing a career in the music industry. It just wasn't, it wasn't working, yeah. right? No matter what ha was happening, whether it was the work that you were doing or the support you were getting from the outside coming in, it just wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. You were essentially got to a point in your life where you had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. It's like, do I keep trying to push this thing and trying to see if I can make it work or do I pivot and go into something else? And I think what's dope about hearing what you, what you did was like you said, it started off with a mindset shift of like, all right, cool. I'm gonna have to take two steps backward Stop doing music, and I'm gonna have to go get a nine to five job. But it's all to set me set me up to now st take five steps forward. Yes, sir. The reason why I love that so much is because, especially, and you know this, the day and age that we live in, and social media, everybody thinks that you know their journey is gonna be linear. Mm. Like there's not gonna be no bumps. It's not a. It's not no, that, bro. They think it it's gonna not. be straight. They're not gonna have to take no steps back. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna start this business. I'm not gonna have to go and balance working a business and working a nine to five. I'm going to make my first six figures in my first week of business and that's going to be it. Yeah. And a lot of people as a result of that pride and that that unwillingness for them to shift their mindset find themselves going through a lot of hardship and a lot of struggle that they don't need to. Like how many people, you probably know this, are in a terrible position right now financially because they don't want to put their pride aside and do what you did and say like, you know, let me go work this nine to five for yep. a couple months and get myself right. What would you say to some of those people to help them kind of put their pride on, put their pride to the side, put their ego on the shelf, and do what they need to do to put themselves in a better position. Not saying they got to go out and get into NAC or mm -hmm. get into real estate, yeah. but just start heading in that right direction again. Um, You got to ask yourself, how bad do you want it? And do you really want it? Like you say you want it. Mm -hmm. Or are you just saying you want it just because everybody else saying they want it? Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like if you really want it, you're going to do the things that you need to do to get ahead. Like I was tired of being broke, bro. Like I, I was sick of that shit. Like it was like <laughs> pissing me off. You get what I'm saying to you? Yes, like, God damn, like I can't do nothing that I want to do. Like I ain't getting the girls that I like. Like nope. I got to dress a certain kind of way that I don't necessarily want to dress. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like it just really like hindered my lifestyle and the person that I wanted to be. Right. And um, the minute that I was able to essentially, you know, get out of my own way and be like, bro, you're sacrificing just for this short amount of time to have long-term greatness. Yeah. Short-term sacrifice for long-term greatness. Right. That always like was a thing for me. Like, all right, cool. If I could sit the fuck down for these two years, these next 45, 50 years, mm -hmm. I can live life however the fuck I want to. Yep. And that's essentially what I did. I mm -hmm. sat down for, man, three years, solid. Worked that job to death. Went back to school, read every book I could, saved every dollar, stopped buying Jordans, eating noodles. Like, I went into a mode where it was like, I turned into a savage. How do almost. I like him, bro? Like, I like you know him? what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, I turned into like, no haircuts. Like, it got rough. The only reason why I would get haircuts is because I had to look presentable for my job. Yeah. Like, you get what I'm saying to you? <laughs> like, like it, it got like that. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? I went to real, like, grimy mode because I knew what my mission was mm -hmm. and I had a date on my mission. Fact. I'm like, I want to do this in the next three years. Mm -hmm. I want to do this in the next five years. It's crazy because in my cubicle at my old job, I had a, a note that I wrote to myself when I first got into, like, you know, just the, the mindset shift in the financial literacy space. I told myself by... January 25th, which is my birthday of 2029, I would own a million dollars in assets. Man, do you know I attained that million dollars in assets three years after I wrote that on Come a on, piece bro. of paper? Come on, bro. You get what I'm saying to you? I wrote that. It was 2013 when I wrote it. It was 16 years prior. Mm -hmm. I had that by 2018 Yeah. in real estate because I went through the NACA program. And mm -hmm. 
it just shows you the power of your words, the power of your mind, and the power of just like sacrificing just for a little bit, bro. Mm -hmm. I had a goal 15 years out and I accomplished it in five years Yeah, because I locked in. That's it. And a lot of times that's where people mess up at and they don't get it. Like, bro, you have 24 hours in a day. And if you spending eight hours working, eight hours sleeping, and eight hours doing whatever else outside of working on your dreams and goals, mm -hmm. where where's your time to grow? It's not there, bro. It's not there. Right. So something has to be sacrificed. Something got to get let go of. Mm -hmm. You it. hear athletes and people who are just like ultra wealthy say it all the time. Like, man, I may have had to sacrifice time with my kids. Mm -hmm. I had to sacrifice time with my family. I didn't do as much as this as I was supposed to. I didn't do as much as that as I was supposed to. But everybody good, though. Mm -hmm. Everybody good, though. Ain't nobody complaining about nothing. Everybody straight. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't able to go to every baseball game. I wasn't able to support everything that my wife did, but everybody good though. And mm -hmm. that's the sacrifice that comes along with, you know, building wealth and things like that. You know what I mean? And that's a it. lot of people just aren't willing to sacrifice, man. I think another part that comes with having a because every person, man, woman, whoever, has to go through that season. Sometimes seasons, plural, Facts. right? Especially when you're trying to go to different levels. You talk a lot about what you had to do internally in terms of just sacrifice and just going into that, just locking in. I know a huge part of that season as well is the external, right? Because as you're getting ready to go through this transition and get to this next level for you and really for everyone else, you now have people, friends, mm -hmm. right? That you had when you were at this level that you essentially, some of them, you know, are still trying to sway you back into where you used to be, right? And some of them aren't really understanding of what you're going through and what you're trying to do here. Yeah. What was that experience like for you? Because like I said, you're, you're from Chicago, yeah. right? And I'm sure there were a lot of people that was looking at you. I was like, Bro, you ain't trying to go out this weekend, bro. You ain't trying to. You ain't trying yeah. to kick it. You ain't trying and to do this with that kind of stuff. Um, I think you know, like that's why I kind of like just disappeared and went into hiding because I didn't want the pressure of any of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know what I got more than anything was, man, bro. You ain't rapping no more. You was this, this, that. You was so good. I remember you did this, this, and that's like, nah, bro. Like it's time to move on. Yeah, like it's time to move on. And like when when something like that becomes your image, and you know that's a very, very like pride and ego driven industry. And to have to step away from that and be like, yeah, I'm not that anymore. When this whole time you were projecting this big image of, you know how rappers be yeah. just like, ah, 18 chains, 40, 40, 40, 40 yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So right. it's like to go from that to this humble employee. Right. Ish. You know what I'm saying? It's tough, bro. It's a lot. Mind you, like I said, I was hanging with NBA guys on a regular, like, you know what I'm saying? Like my homie, like I say, multi-platinum producer, all of these things to go from that to sit in the cubicle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? With yeah. the with the same mindset that, you know, I essentially, the neighborhoods that I come from, the Section 8 mindset, the low-income mindset, that you know what, instead of me going to work and get my way out of this, I'd rather get government assistance mindset. Like, these, like, I just got out of out the joint mindset, but I'm finna go back into the streets. It's like, nah, bro, you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. These are the people that I'm in the environment with, working with. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, to go from that to here was just, like, insane to me. Mm -hmm. It was very humbling. I went through a depression for a little while, mm. but I I had to snap out of it because I had daughters and also had goals of being wealthy, bro, that I just could not give up on. Mm. And with that thought process and that mindset, like I was just down to like my last thing. Like, let me just Google, like, how do how do regular everyday people get rich? Mm. Stock market, real estate kept on coming up, reading stories about Robert Kiyosaki, all these different people who got rich. And Rich Dad, Poor Dad came up. It was on sale on Amazon for maybe like $3.99, 5 bucks, something like that. And I ordered it. I read that book in one day, and that was the book that just really like- Changed oh, it. Man, it's go time. Yeah. Like, it's go time. Like, yeah. man, that's why I said. Saved every dollar, noodles, all that. Just really went crazy. Locked in. And after a couple of years, bro, I had about 10, 12 grand saved up. Reached out to Kiyoki, like I said, because I knew she was the only person who really like ever taught me anything about real estate for real. And I like, knew she knew her shit. And um, I'm like, yeah, I want to buy a house. And she was like, no, nah, I don't buy no house. She was like, that's a cool idea or whatever. That's the American dream that they sell you. But she's like, man, go get you a multi-unit property, Dre. She's like, you'll be able to live for free. And that little money that you're making at your job that you don't think is no money, it'll turn into a lot of money because all of it will become yours. Because the people that's living in your property, they'll pay your mortgage for you, allow you to live for free, and the money that you're working for, you get to keep it now. That's so $26,000 a year and paying rent, that ain't no money. Yeah. But when you can save twenty, twenty thousand dollars dollars $25,000, that's a whole different ball game. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And Facts. that's the play that I ran with the NACA program. So she told me about the NACA program, 
It was like, this is the program to use to go get your first property. Make sure you go get you a four unit. Don't get you a two unit. Don't get you a three unit. Make sure you get you a four unit because we got plenty of them in Chicago and you can find one. And um, man, I, I followed her instructions. I went and did exactly what that lady said. And here we are. There we go. So let's 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 break down that. <laughs> let's give him the game because there's somebody watching. He's like, yo, he keeps saying knack 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 knack. I want to. Like, we want to make sure we break this thing down for people so that they know how they could get in, everything they need to know about it, so that they're fully equipped to go in and dive in. Right? Yeah. Can we do that? Is that absolutely? Let's, let's do it. it. Let's so first and foremost, let's just get to the root of it all. What exactly is the NACA program? How how does it work? Uh, NACA, like you said earlier in the show, Neighborhood Assistance Corporations of America, and NACA is a program funded by Bank of America, and it was designed and created in um, the early 90s to combat illegal real estate practices like redlining and, mm. you know what I mean, stuff like that. And um, the CEO is a guy named Bruce Marks, and Bruce was very, very aggressive in the early days with, you know what I mean, going to the banks and knocking on people's doors and, like, going to people's houses like to get people in the proper mortgages and to stop people from losing their homes. Gotcha. And um, that program has essentially transitioned into a program that help, you know, not just low income and, you know what I mean, uh, impoverished communities, but they help everybody. But it's more beneficial to you if you are low income or, you know what I mean, not making a lot of money like how I was, because it allows you to go and take the little bit of money that you are making and purchase in whatever kind of neighborhood that you can afford based on the amount of rent that you can pay and the amount of savings that you can save up. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, so now that we have some context on what the NACA program is and how does it work, I want to also kind of flesh out just all the different intricacies that come along with it so people truly understand how they can leverage this program to potentially secure their first property. Absolutely. So to start off, what exactly, if I'm interested in this program, I'm like, okay, I hear hear Dre on this podcast. I love everything he's hearing. Break this thing down for me. For starters, what exactly do I need to go ahead and qualify for NACA? Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to tell you the benefits of the program first just Let's to turn it. you up real fast. You know what I'm saying? Let's go. So Come on. You get no closing costs, mm. no down payment, no agent or attorney fees, the lowest interest rate in the country with the option to buy it down lower, regardless Crazy. of what your credit score is, regardless of what your credit score is, 580, 600, 540, it don't matter. It's more about your credit profile than your actual credit score. Okay. So if you got a decent DTI and you can afford to go pay your rent, NACA's theme is if you can afford to pay rent, you can afford to pay mortgage. And those are the benefits to the program. The thing some people complain about with the program is you have to occupy the property for the life of the loan or up to five years. Then after five years, you can refinance out of the property or sell it if you got equity in it to move on. You know what I mean? Um, NACA wants you to be an advocate for the program, which I've essentially become the biggest advocate for the program. Bro, you are Mr. NACA. (laughs) (laughs) I am the the NACA nigga. Yeah, yeah, bro. (laughs) Yes, yes. So um, that's one of the things that I've, like, you know what I mean, taken a lot of pride in being able to help people and tell people about the program. So that's one of their requirements as well, bro. Um, You know, they put a five-year lien on the property for that five years of $25,000. But every year up to the fifth year, $5,000 drops off. So year one, you're at 20. Year two, you're at 15. So after five years, you're free and clear to do whatever you want to do. But they just want to make sure that you're not just trying to get into their program to take advantage of it, to start fixing and flipping and doing all of these investment strategies because they're not designed to create investors. They're designed to balance out neighborhoods. Mm. So NACA's main goal is to create neighborhoods where all property values are the same. So they don't want a poor neighborhood and a wealthy neighborhood. They want it to where it's, all right, somebody like me who makes $26,000, I can go buy in a neighborhood where the median income is $500,000. But they don't want a person who makes $500,000 to go and buy in a million-dollar neighborhood or a $500,000 neighborhood. They want them to go maybe buy in a $200,000 neighborhood, $300,000 neighborhood. That way you have people who make $500,000 $500,000 over here, you have someone who makes $26,000 over here, and the balances common, out, everything right. balances out the right way. And that's their main goal. But me, I've taken advantage of the program to not only get a four unit, which is essentially an investment property, but it's a self-occupied investment property. So I live in it. And I just took the money that I saved and went and did other stuff with it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's what I tell people again. No down payment, no closing costs, no agent or attorney fees. Imagine that bag you're going to have left over after you close. 
No, see, I want to make sure. So, so no, no down payment, no, down payment, no, no closing, closing costs, costs, no attorney, no agent or attorney fees. Lord have mercy. And what's up? What's up? Like, is, <laughs> is there the anything lowest up? interest rate in the country? Lowest interest rate in the country, regardless of what your score is, with the option to buy it down lower. So, if, let's say you get a seller, and I've taken advantage, I took advantage of all of these things. Yeah, like I didn't bought my interest rate down with somebody else's money, walked away from the closing table with somebody else's money. Um, like I say, went and got me a four unit, like just everything that you could possibly do with the NACA program mm -hmm. to be successful and, you know, help your situation. I've been able to do it and take advantage of it, man. Come on now. Because I'm like, I'm big on educating myself before I go do something. A lot of people, before they do something, they don't really learn much about it. They just go like, they'll see a 30 second clip on the internet, but all right, cool. Let me go apply right. for NACA. It's like, bro, I, went, I learned real estate. I learned everything I could learn about the NACA program, like all of these different things to make sure that I was thoroughly prepared to fully take advantage of this opportunity that I was going to be presenting. Because I had somebody tell me like, yo, this is going to be a golden opportunity. Make sure you run the play and execute it correctly because this could be life-changing for you. Right. And it was. Come on now. Come on now. I would have done... <laughs> bro, this is... Yeah, man. This program is... Hey, let's we 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 gonna break this thing down. <laughs> so another part of it, you you touched on something that I wanted to go into next, which was you talked about. Um, I've actually heard MG the mortgage guy talk about this, where he's like, when it comes to looking to get a mortgage, um, banks are looking at eligibility, not affordability. Mm -hmm. And essentially, what he talked about was a lot of times on paper you may be in position to go out and get a mortgage, but you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're house house rich and okay. cash poor. Yep. So even though, to your point, the program does create a lot of opportunity because you, you're minimizing a lot of those costs that you would normally get with a normal real estate transaction, mm -hmm. I'm curious to know from your experience and from other people you've seen navigate through, you know, no closing costs, no agent fees, and all these other different things. But ideally, should you be in a certain space financially before you even consider? Because it's at the end of the day, on the other side of it, this is still a property. Absolutely. Right. It's, right. The, it's the same um, qualification requirements as any lender. Okay. As any bank. You know, two years tax history, two mm -hmm. years work history, bank statement, check stubs, um, uh, substantial savings. Um, NACA has what's called a minimum required funds. So they need you to have a certain amount of money in your account before they allow you to close. And those funds are not for closing costs, any of the, you know, fees that you would pay with a conventional loan or FHA or any other kind of loan. Mm -hmm. This money is to pay for your taxes, your insurance, which you're responsible for. They're not responsible for that. Mm -hmm. And also to make sure that, again, you're not house rich and cash poor. Mm -hmm. Because let's say most people, what, three and a half, 10%, 20% down, sometimes that's a person's whole life savings. You spent 10, 15, 20 years to save 20, 30, 40, $50,000. Now you have to liquidate it and put it into your home or your property. And a lot of times, some of that money, a big chunk of that money, don't even go towards the equity in the property. Those are just fees that you're paying that you don't even know about because you don't know shit about real estate. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like origination fees and all of these things. Like mm -hmm. you're just giving out money that you don't know about. NACA eliminates all of that stuff. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. you're like, that's one of the benefits of the program. And um, I think it's so, so beneficial to like educate yourself before you do things. 100%. And I did that. And uh, that's how and why I was able to take full advantage of the program. And even when you speak on being house rich and cash poor, um, I even did another strategy that MG talks about a lot. Shout out to my guy, MG. Shout out to man. MG. Um, divide and conquer. So I, I went and got me a property through the NACA program. Me and my girl at the time, we weren't married. So we took her back and got her one too. All right, we got to wait. Let me sit up. Like, break, walk, walk, yeah. me, walk me through your process yeah. and then walk me through the process that you had um, your uh, your girl your girl go through. Walk, okay. walk step by step. When you were going through it yourself, okay. what, what did that process look like? Um, so, of course, you know, you went through the, the four-hour NACA meeting. Of course, you got that first. And then, you know, you set up your meeting with your mortgage counselor. Once you have your meeting with your mortgage counselor, that's essentially, like I say, when everything starts, you know, the background check, they check your documentation, make sure your money and all of those things in order. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, they'll either be like, all right, cool, you ready to rock and roll? Or they're going to say, hey, look, you're not quite ready, but here's a checklist of things to do. Come back when you have this checklist checked off, and then we'll be ready to, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, to prove you and get you uh, funded or whatever the case may be. Um, and that's a great thing, too, because most lenders... They'll give you a decline letter. They don't give you a checklist of things that you have and don't have and tell you to come back and we're still going to help you. You don't have a file like NACA still keeps your file intact. You don't have to reapply or any of that kind of stuff. You just come back with the proper documents and they'll continue on as if, you know what I mean, you never left. That's one of the benefits. Most programs, they are not pouring into you like that and telling you, hey, right. look, go do this or teaching you how to come back and get a loan from them. They don't do that. You just right. declined. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the benefits that I really, really love about the program, man, because they really like, you know, walk you by hand 
through the door and show you how to attain your first property. And even with that, like, I they put me in a landlord class, bro. Like, so I can make to make sure I understand like the rules and the laws of my particular area, my mm-hmm. city. Um, you know, the landlord laws and just the the things that you know we have to be mindful of so that we're not getting sued and you know different things like that. And um, after I met with my mortgage counselor and everything, um, you know. I went through the process of getting approved, which took about maybe a month because I had to clear some things up. Mm-hmm. And I uh, got my letter. And the longest part of the process, honestly, man, it's, it's searching for property. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you want a property that makes sense. You want a property because you have to live in it that's livable. Um, if not livable, something that you can fix up and take pride in. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, the the searching process is the is always the hardest and the longest part. Me getting qualified and all that wasn't, wasn't hard because... I kind of like had my ducks in a row, you know what right. I mean? Had my T's crossed and my I's dotted already. So me being out in that field, man, me losing to cash buyers, me dealing with people not wanting to deal with a knack alone because it's a knack alone, right. like, you know what I mean? Stuff like that that I've had to deal with. But um, again, I knew the benefits of the program and I knew that I was essentially about to get a whole lot of something for nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't care how long it's going to take. I'm like, I'll be patient. I'll wait it out. I'm going right. to it out. I've been broke my whole life. 27 years. Come on, bro. 28, 29, 30 years I've been broke. Mm -hmm. So you telling me now I'm finna rush to try to get this deal done Mm -hmm. and I've been fine. Like, no, I'm going to put myself in the best situation possible. And that's exactly what I did. So from December up until May is how long it took me to close. I closed on May 29th on my first property. Um, Again, no closing costs, no agent or attorney fees, no down payment, none of these things. So all of the money that I had saved up ended up being about about $15,000 at the time, right? Because they still require you to save as you're going through the process and keep your same spending patterns and all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. So I ended up saving about $15,000. I got a $15,000 seller's concession from the seller. You know what I mean? For those who don't know, can you explain what a seller's concession is? A seller's concession is? is pretty much when you ask the person you're buying the property from to help you with your closing costs or to give you money to make repairs and stuff like that. Okay. And um, they can say yes or no. This particular time, they said yes. They gave me $15,000, but I didn't need the money to make repairs or anything. That's none of their business. You didn't have to tell them that. You know, just like, can I get some money? Right. You, know, you just That's gave it. it to me. Yeah. And um, they said, yeah, I used 10 of the $15,000 to buy the interest rate down from 3.5% to 2.5%. Mm-hmm. And um, the other 5000 was kind of left floating in the air and at the closing table ended up coming back to me because why? That's the money that they gave me and who else would it go to but me? Now NACA doesn't let you walk away from the closing table with cash anymore. So they would probably put that money towards the principal or about an interest rate down even lower. But at the time I was able to walk away with that cash. 50% of businesses fail within the first five years and 38% of those businesses fail due to lack of access to capital. But 100% of business owners who are watching this aren't gonna have that issue because I'm about to teach y'all how to bankroll your business. What's going on family? My name is Marvin Francois and back in 2020, I was a new entrepreneur with little to no idea on how I was going to build my first successful business. But fast forward a couple of years later, I've been able to build multiple successful six-figure businesses by leveraging business credit. And today I want to give entrepreneurs the game on how they can do the same. So this Thursday, I'm going to be hosting my free bankroll your business masterclass, where I'm going to teach you for how to go from having bad personal credit and little to no business funding to having perfect personal credit and access to a minimum of $50,000 in funding for your your business. Spots are going fast and the clock is ticking. So if you haven't already, click the link above or below this video to secure your seat and I'll see y'all on Thursday. Peace. So now you now what year was this when you secured your first property? This was 2015. Oh, and got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you. Gotcha. And, and not only like I say did I get the the property, I kept all of my money. I got a five thousand dollar check. Mm-hmm. I closed at the end of the month. So I walked into a property that I was able to live in for free mm-hmm. and I started collecting rent checks the very same day. I had my mortgage paid. I got paid from my job. Um, just like it was just like the biggest bag of money that I ever seen. I went from making twenty six thousand dollars a year to having twenty six thousand dollars sitting in my account cash, Crazy. and didn't have to pay it to anybody. Crazy. Because now me owning this property just eliminated all of my bills, bro. I'm about to sweat. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to sweat. What are we talking about? Yeah, right let's go, bro. Let's so, go. Right, so, so that, that was your experience. Yeah. Like you said, you then you you go through this program. Yeah. You like, man, I got I got my girl over here. We about yeah. to run the same play again. Yeah. Talk about that. How did that yeah. work? And then, um, so like I said, I had all of this cash sitting, bro. 
Um, so big chunk of it, I put it in the stock market because I had been reading like Money Master the Game and all that. Mind you, I educate myself before before I get the money, I already know what I'm gonna do with it. You know how they be like, man, you just spent the money before you already got it. I invested the money before I already got it. Come on, now. I already have I have my plan already. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I have my blueprint. So as soon as I got it, man, went straight to Vanguard, dumped Roth IRA, Apple stock, you know what I'm saying? Vanguard ETFs. I went crazy, bro. Kept some money, went and bought me a Jag, went on a vacation. But bulk of it went to the stock market. At the time, Donald Trump had just got in office. Mm -hmm. So the stock market boomed. Mm -hmm. So that fucking $18,000 that I put into the market mm -hmm. had turned into like $27,000, $30,000 over a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And when it was time for us to go buy her property, we needed every bit of that money and some. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, with that one, we got a seller's concession as well. Dope. Now, her process was longer because, again, y'all, the searching process, I had her ready and everything all ready to go because I had been through it already. So like, look, before we even go apply for these people, we're going to have your check stub, we're going to have everything in order. So as soon as we go in, you get approved right away. We did. We got approved right away. I had the same mortgage accounts to all everything, man. I'm so proud of y'all. Y'all running the play like I told y'all to run the play. Like, you know what I'm saying? Dapping me up, man, pushing the paperwork. I like, it. oh, we good. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? And here we go out in the field. Mm -hmm. Man, this was hard, bro. This was hard. Like, this was one of the toughest, like, situations and times that I've ever dealt with in real estate because we were chugging, man, putting in offers, constantly getting beat out, not being accepted. It got to a point where we almost lost $10,000 earnest money on a deal, bro. Really? $10,000 earnest money on a deal because we were um, trying to buy a property that was in foreclosure from the bank. So we're not dealing with just a regular seller. This is a bank. They're investors. They don't give a fuck about you, your feelings, or your money. Mm -hmm. So we had to put $10,000 earnest money down. And sometimes NACA can drag, bro. They're not the fastest. They're not the, you know what I'm saying, most efficient. They're not the most, you know what I'm saying, anything. Um, when it comes to documents and paperwork, they will, you know what I mean, take their time. So be be mindful of that. that even though you hear me talking about all of these benefits and all this great stuff, there is going to be some hiccups. There is going to be some walls that you're going to run into. You will definitely have some issues. But again, when you know the benefit of what this program can do, it's like you don't let that hinder you or detour you. You get through it. You get over it. Like you find a way under it, around it, something. And um, with this particular property, man, the contract was about to expire and the NACA um, has a repair department called the hand department, almost similar to a 203K loan. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to do a renovation on the property. And for whatever reason, the appraisal was not coming back the right way when we did the ARV after we, you know what I mean, sent over like what we were going to do for repairs. And time was ticking. And these people refused to give us an extension on the contract with the hopes that we would, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like overextend the time and they get to keep our money. Right. Um, and it almost happened, bro. It almost happened. Um, and we thought we were about to lose the money, but you would not believe what had happened, which ended up canceling the contract. And it was by the grace of God. So it was two days left before the contract was going to expire and they're going to keep our money, right? Tell me why my agent calls me and was like, man, you will not believe this. He was like, why did somebody break into the house and steal all the pipes? He's like, that now makes the contract null and void. Boy. <laughs> Boy. Bro, that's <laughs> he's, like, he's like, he's like, that now makes the contract null. This, this is how I, this is like, this is one of the times in my life where I knew that I was one of God's favorites. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. you, like, I always have these moments and times right. in my life. It's like, God, you really, like, you really I rock with you. me. Hey. Like, you really, you really <laughs> rock with me. It. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. was one of those times because that $10,000 hit at the time would have took us out, bro. Like, we were just really, like, getting started. We had the one property. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mind you, we had some bread saved up, but that that big chunk of money would have really took us out, and it would have mm -hmm. stopped us from, you know, getting this property. Mm -hmm. So once we got out of that deal, we were like, thank God. We, like, we pumped the brakes mm -hmm. for, like, 30 days. Like, we need to recalibrate. We need to chill for a minute. Like, we told the mortgage council, like, yo, we... We just need a break for a second. So we'll get back to you when you're ready to get back out here and start looking again. And um, we started looking again, and... um. She was just like, man, I want to work closer to my job. And she's in an area called Lincoln Park, which is a very prestigious neighborhood in Chicago. And, um, you know, the surrounding neighborhoods, you know, you got West Town, Ukrainian Village, Logan Square, uh, Wicker Park, Bucktown, like, you know, all of these little popular neighborhoods. And I'm like, it's expensive over there. But uh, 
it's crazy because when she said that, we had a meeting with the mortgage counselor like the next day. And I was mentioning to him where she wanted to live. And he was like, y'all can do that. I was like, how? He's like, you know, that could go up to like $960,000 for a four unit, right? Crazy. I'm like, since when? He was like, yeah, the FHA just dropped new rules and we go by FHA. And um, the the max on the four unit just went up to almost a million dollars. And he was like, as long as you can find a property that covers the majority of the mortgage, if not all of it, and if you all can afford to pay whatever the difference is, take up there. So we started looking, man. Um, and again, it's crazy how things work out. You know, lost a couple of deals on the north side. Um, mm-hmm. And this one property it was gorgeous, man. It was a three unit, laid out, high rents, everything that we needed to qualify for. Mm-hmm. But the seller would not accept our offer. So we went to see another property. And this one, the, the aesthetics and the layout of the property were better. But the first property, it was just much nicer, upgraded, just brand new spanking new everything. But then we went to this other property. This was a four unit, a very unique four unit, especially in the city of Chicago. you got a three unit building in the front of the lot. And then in some areas, they're called ADUs. In Chicago, we call them coach houses in the back of the lot. The coach house is not considered just a house. They're on the same pen on the same lot, and that's the fourth unit. Okay. So essentially, this is two properties for one. A three yeah. unit and a house. And this yeah. ain't no regular size house. I'm talking about this house is laid. 12-foot coffer ceilings, floating stairs, Ooh. oak floors, Crazy. like, you know, floating cabinets, like, just, like, modern, upstate right. everything. Rooftop deck with tarp where you can go see the city skyline, hang right. out with your family, all of these things, right? And I'm like, oh, no, we're not going to get this <laughs> one. Like, this one, this one, too far. Right. Like, and they not going to be willing to give us no money. Mm-hmm. And, um, man, we went in there. And it just so happens the day we went to view the property, it wasn't the agent. The seller was there. Mm. He's a Puerto Rican guy. Come on now. Brown. Right. Man, look just like a brother. Right. He's like, man, I am so glad to see y'all because so many white people have been coming in here trying to lowball me and play with me like I don't know what I got. He's right. a developer. They didn't know this, though. Mm-hmm. He, built, he built it. Right, he right, built right, everything. Right. He know how, how much his stuff worth in there. He's like, so what do y'all need for me to help y'all close on this property? Bro. I told my agent, I'm like, we need 40000 Because the property was $879,000. Mm-hmm. And my agent was like, man, I don't feel comfortable asking for $40,000. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, ask that man for $40,000. He already told me whatever I need. He put the offer in. Dude said, yeah. That's it, bro. But listen, though. The property before that, they called us back. and was like, we ready to accept y'all offer. Yeah. They call us back like, look, all right, we went and talked to our guys Mm because it was like a a three-person team. Mm -hmm. And two of the guys voted no. And one of them was like, yeah, we want to like... So he got outvoted. Mm -hmm. But then a few weeks later, man, they called back like, yo, we will accept y'all offer. We'll give y'all the money y'all want, et cetera. But it didn't make sense because it's like, now we got this four unit over here with a whole separate Separate. living space that's laid out beautifully, amazing, nice. And this is a three unit. It was five. But it wasn't like this, though. Mm-hmm. So we like, nah, we cool. We ran with that <laughs> offer, bro. We took dude money to 40000 Mind you, this one didn't have no down payment either. Crazy. We put up $70,000 to buy the interest rate down to 0.8%. Stop. Just give me a second. <laughs> don't say, don't say, don't say another word. Just stop. Just give me a second. I want to make sure I heard you correctly. Bro, hold on. Give me a second. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I want to make sure I heard you correct. Yeah. Repeat what you just said. Hold on. Say it slow so I can make sure I heard you correctly. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, that man gave us money. I told y'all the money that I had in the stock market had ran up crazy at the time. So uh-huh. I pulled that money out. Okay. Um, and she had some money saved up. So we made it work out with him. Uh, put all the bread together. Bought the interest rate down to zero point eight percent, less than one percent. Zero point eight percent. Is that st- NACA, We broke the bank so hard. NACA don't even allow you. But talking about is that that's still that's still on? You still have that property, yeah. so it's still on that property. Yes. Lord have mercy. <laughs> look, like look, look. somebody get NACA on the phone right now, bro. <laughs> I gotta make a phone yeah, call. Yeah. So, Bro, 0.8%. Zero, they, so it got to the point where, like, we broke the bank with that one, and they don't even allow people to buy the interest rate below 1% anymore. Crazy. 
Like, it's not even allowed. It's not a thing. Like, you can't do it anymore. They're like, this is the last time we will ever allow this to happen. Family, listen, you could have saw this interview early and ad free if you became a member of my Patreon. Not only that, but you could have also saw behind the scenes footage that's only available to my Patreon community. So what are you waiting for? Listen, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Marvin Francois show for early and ad free content on all things credit, real estate, trucking, Toro, you name it, we got it. That's patreon.com forward slash the Marvin Francois show. But back to the interview. This man then shifted the rules. He was like, never again. <laughs> so, never again. So the crazy thing is, we got that property, man. And um, it's been about four and a half years on that one. Um, mm -hmm. But we just got hit with a stupid tax increase, right? Okay. Like $25,000 a year. Like, that's, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. But that also means when that happens, that your property value has gone up drastically. Mm -hmm. So even though we got a 0.8%, that's fine. But now we're about to sell it. But the profit that we're going to make in four years is about $300,000. Crazy. And wow. with what I know now and the network that I have and just the, the business acumen, the information that I have, I took making $26,000 a year and turned it into what I turned it into. Imagine me having $300,000 in Bro, cash. Bro, it's a wrap. <laughs> Bro. It's a wrap. What are we talking about? Like you get what I'm saying to you? Bro, bro. And I'm way smarter than I was when I was making 26000 a year. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have that cash on top of my property, my first knack of property, mm -hmm. and I'm about to go stupid. You get what I'm saying to yeah. you? Like I'm about to scale and go stupid. Mm -hmm. Jamal King, nine to five millionaire, is my new mentor. Shout out to Jamal. Shout out to Jamal. Mm -hmm. Like he pulled me to the side one day. And we were just talking about this, bro. I don't reach out to people and ask... Like, bro came and was like, man, bro, like, I like what you're doing. Like, man, I just, like, just, I'm finna cuff you, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You finna be little bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? And he just like, man, when you sell that property, he's like, that money, he's like, we're going to turn it into over a million dollars in 16 months. Yeesh. Easy. And it's like, that's what I'm saying, man. That's why I be feeling like and knowing that I'm one of God's favorites mm -hmm. because every situation that I put myself in ends up turning into something greater. Every relationship that comes happens organically. Like I'm not out here like searching and being a weirdo looking for friends and like being all socially awkward and shit, man. It like it genuinely happens, man. Like you hit me like, man, bro, I like what you're doing. I need That's you it. to come on the show. Like, you know what I'm saying? I rock with you. And um, it's not a pride or ego thing with me. It's just me really just allowing God to place and remove people from my life without me having to do anything. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't yeah. force nothing, man. I really operate in a space of detachment. And it's just like, it's not that I don't care. It's just like, no, I know enough to just allow God to work, bro. That's I'm very it. spiritual, bro. Like, I let God do his thing, man. I'm not forcing nothing. I'm not trying to, like, encourage or convince. It's just like, man, listen, I'm going to tell you my story. I'm going to tell you how God working in my life. You can take it and run with it. Or you can, you know what I mean? Leave it where it's at. It's up to you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If you heard 0.8% interest and you don't think God is real, something's wrong with you. <laughs> Something is definitely wrong. And listen, bro. though, like even over over the years, bro, like not only were we making money off the three units, like the house that I told you about has been making money from peer space. Like talk we about that out to people who want to do music videos, who make YouTube shorts, like all of these different things, bro. Like mm -hmm. that I figured out and learned about, and I teach people about. And peer space has been a game changer for us because. A couple of years ago on that property, we had a $30,000 plumbing issue. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, like I don't want to have to pay every single dollar 30, I got. 30000 What happened? I had to replace, like, man, pipes and just, like, create a whole new sewage system to stop my building from flooding. Or gotcha. else it would have cost me a lot of money. Gotcha, gotcha, And, gotcha. Um, yeah, man, that, that me purchasing that property with her... And, you know, watching the equity go up, mm -hmm. me doing peer space, all of these different things has set us up amazingly, bro. Mm -hmm. And just, I want people to watch these podcasts and not only like receive the information, not only retain the information, but go out and take action on the information because this stuff really works when you apply it, bro. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are like, yeah, knowledge is power. No, applied knowledge is power, bro. Facts. Like, if you actually go out and do the, everything that I've read in the book that I've went and did, it's worked. Everything. It's nothing that I did. Like, oh, man, that shit didn't work. Most people, they say something is a scam or it don't work because you didn't go out and execute. Mm -hmm. You felt like once you was finished with the book, 
that it was going to give you these magical powers and money was just going to start appearing. It's like, nah, nigga, you got to go out and do the work. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh, I just read this book. Bless me, Lord. Like, yeah. it's like, nah, bro. Gotta like, faith it, bro. without works is dead. Got to apply it, bro. You got to apply it, man. I'm curious, though, because you, you mentioned, bro, going back to the peer, split, peer, peer space, that's interesting. So how does NACA work in that regard? Because... Like you said, it's not necessarily a program for investors, yeah. but you found ways to essentially take this property that you've gotten through NACA and essentially turn it outside of, you have rental income that's coming from people that you've rented out the units yeah. to. And then now you also talk about, I'm assuming that unit that you have in the back, that's for yeah. peer space. But you somebody lived there still. Break, break, down, break down how that works in regards to the whole yeah. NACA. Because like you said, you're, it's not an investing program, yeah. but you've essentially leveraged it to where you've gotten in with little to no money and now it's just a cash flow magnet for you. Loopholes, so. baby. You got to learn how to jump through them things. Like, okay. you know what I'm saying? Um, right. And at this point, it's not a cash flow machine anymore, which is why we're going to sell it. The taxes just jumped up. Like I say, y'all crazy on us, which makes it a smart thing to sell because now it's no longer cash flow. And let me go take this money that's sitting in the property and buy more cash flow with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But for a while it was because I was able to do peer space, which allowed someone to live in the property and still generate $2,000 a month with somebody living in it for some people coming to do, like I say, music videos, hosting dinner parties. You may have a corporate company that want to use your property to create a commercial all of these things because the property, again, is really, really nice. Like, I have it listed right now for like $1.2 million. Like, I'm getting offers right now. My phone's going off right now in my lap from my agent probably telling me like, hey, we got another offer in. What do you think? Et cetera. Like, we just listed the place three days ago and we got 10 showings already. You know Crazy. what I mean? Um, and Peer Space allowed us to offset that $30,000 plumbing issue that I got hit with because I'm like, yo, how am I finna pay for this because it's gonna eat up all the cash flow. So I created another form of cash flow by putting peer space up on, mm-hmm. um, putting the place on peer space. And I found out about peer space because again, I used to rap. And one of my guys who used to shoot my videos and stuff, he used to always have these dope places for us to go shoot at. And I'm like, yo, how do you be finding these places? And he told me about it. And I just, you know, went in one ear and out the other, like, all right, that's cool or whatever. But then when I got this house, mm-hmm. he came over there to shoot some content. Like, yo, you need to put this on peer space. Because if you do, I'm going to come over here and start renting it from you. Mm-hmm. And again, the light bulb went off. I did it immediately. Anytime somebody who I trust and love tell me something, I'm taking action. Right. Especially if it's something that's going to benefit me. Sure. You know what I mean? I'm taking action on it. I listed the place a day later, immediately. <sighs> Bookings, 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 bookings. Hey, we want to book your peer space for a video shoot. Hey, can we host a dinner party there for our job? It's like all of these bookings kept on coming in, man. And um, it it offset that plumbing issue for a long period of time and still allowed motherfuckers to live for free and really like do what they wanted to do until this tax bill just recently hit. That's it. Another aspect of this real estate game as well, you know, essentially between peer space and between these tenants, you're now essentially a landlord, right? Yeah. Absolutely. And like you and I know, especially when you own property, when so, when it comes to something going wrong, it's never a matter if, it's always a matter when. Something's going to happen. Oh, fast. You, you just talked about it with the $30,000 plumbing issue, which is crazy. Outside of that, what what has been your worst experience to date in just in terms of like dealing with tenants, if any at all? Um, I don't, I don't really have tenant issues because I screen relatively good. Um, I will say the one tenant that I inherited when we first bought that property, uh, mm-hmm. the four unit with the house. Yeah. The seller, he had his brother living in a garden unit, and his rent was really, really low. Gotcha. And um, he didn't really like the fact that the neighborhood was changing and, you know what I mean, gentrifying or whatever the case may be. Again, like I told you, they grew up in a neighborhood. Puerto Rican guys, they from there. You know what I mean? He don't want to leave what's his home. Right. And, um, you know, his brother let him know, like, man, I'm selling the place. If they decide to go up on a rent and you can't afford it, you're going to have to move or whatever. And um, after about a year, you know, because we needed him to stay there to qualify for it or whatever the case may be. So we like, he cool. After about a year, the pandemic hit. So he tried to pull the, you know, the pandemic play on me and not pay his rent. So I'm like, all right, let's go. go. And mind you, I'm a pretty smart guy. Like, I'm not really like the kind of guy that's going to like be trying to fight you and all aggressive and angry. I'm, a, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to use this to right. outwit you. And um, he was having some issues with his apartment. Apartment started flooding. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't get it fixed. Right. Mind you, this particular time frame in the summer of Chicago, we getting hammered with rain. Two, three straight weeks of just, just pouring down. I mean, just killing the man. He got a dog, poop water coming up out the ground. His dog got to walk around in the poop water. Right. And at the while, he ran out the place, ran out that joint. Like Crazy. I cannot do this anymore. Right. So that took about two and a half weeks for him to get out. Um, but I did have a nice little cleaning bill, and it was fine because I was going to renovate the apartment anyway when he mm-hmm. left. 
So that's why I wasn't really tripping on the flood. I'm like, I got to take all this shit out of here anyway. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, bro, that was probably like my worst experience with a tenant. Like I typically, like I say, screen very well. Um, my intuition is really, really strong. It doesn't lie to me at all. You know what I mean? When it comes to, yeah, this is a good person or don't fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? And um, I go with that, bro. You know, um, I use Zillow to do my screening process. You know what I mean? They do background checks. They do credit check, work history, all of these different things. And um, I haven't had an issue, man, with finding tenants at all, bro. And I don't have issues with bad tenants or tenants not paying because I'm intentional about buying in good neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm intentional about buying where there are good schools, where there's shopping, where there's public transportation. Things that draw in good quality tenants and not like low income housing, vacant lots. I don't buy in those areas. Not saying that anything is wrong with them because there's value everywhere in real estate. But for places that I use this program to buy that were, you know, Tenant occupied, oh, yeah, I had to, you know what I'm saying, buy somewhere nice, especially if I'm going to live there. Yeah. And why not go and take advantage of a program like this to buy you the biggest, nicest, best place in the world? Yeah. And to that point as well, I was even when I was doing what we talking about, because you talked about essentially how you were taught, like, yo, if you're going to get a, pro a property through NACA, go to one of the best neighborhoods that you possibly can in Chicago. When I did my research on a program, I know they described it as like priority members versus mm -hmm. like non-priority. If you make over $100,000, you'll be what's considered a non-priority member, which essentially means you don't get the lowest interest rate, but you still get a lower rate than the national average. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. That's it. But once again, to your point, ain't nobody getting that. Ain't nobody getting that 0.8. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't it's average. a wrap. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. You go down to about one. Maybe. Maybe. If that. If, if, that, if that. If that. Especially at this point, because it's going to cost a lot of money to buy from 7% down to one. It was so, easy to buy from three to Two. So that's what I was about to say. That was going to be my next question is, obviously, right now we're in a recession. Is what's going on right now in the market, how does that directly affect NACA, if at all, when it comes to the program? Um, it makes it harder for NACA buyers to um, purchase properties, especially with this competitive market, because, you know, you got people offering 20% down, 10% down. NACA is a no down payment. So it's like you saying you ain't going to put no money down. It makes your offer look kind of weak compared to somebody that's willing to put down 20% of different things like that. Um, but again, man, this is a patience game. You know what you're doing. You know what you're getting yourself into. You know like how far you're trying to take this program. So again, you have to be patient. Anything worth having is going to take some time. Facts. You get what I'm saying to you? So me, that's what I'm saying. Like Both times, I was willing to wait it out because I knew the benefits of the program. Bro, the, the cost of the property was $879,000. Imagine putting 20% down on $879,000. That's, that's a pretty penny, bro. Like You get what I'm saying? 10% down. Still a pretty bad. Five percent. That's like, like you get what I'm saying to you. Still a pretty like bad. all of these, we talking 30, 40, 50, 60, up to a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. And that's money that you've worked for to save your entire life. You really right. want to let that go? Yeah. This is free money, man. Go get you some. That's it. Go get you some. Listen, <laughs> I know we got to start getting you out of here, but I would be remiss. You got that mindset matters from head to toe. I know, like we talked about off camera, you don't really like promoting and talking about what you have going on, but <laughs> I only bring attention to it because yeah. throughout this entire sit down and even through other sit downs I've seen you do, everything you talk about always comes back to two things, mindset and God, mindset yep. and God, Absolutely. mindset. And Absolutely. Even just listening to how you talked about the story with the three unit, with the one in the back, like certain things like that don't just happen. It don't. Right? It don't. So I think a great way to kind of close this thing out, just talk a little bit about the brand, of course, of Mindset Matters as okay. well, where it came from, what it means to you now being Absolutely. where you are, looking back to where yeah, you came yeah, from. yeah. And shed some light on that for another entrepreneur, an aspiring entrepreneur who may be looking at you who's where you were, yeah. right? And to see hearing your story and it wants to learn more about how this brand kind of brings it all together. I feel like mindset matters, like how Frank Lucas felt about, you know what I'm saying? Um, the, what was it? The blue? Uh, <laughs> yeah, blue magic, man. Um, you know, I stand behind it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I put my, you know, everything on it, man. Like mindset matters more than anything in this world. Like before I got some money, before I was able to get into real estate, before I was able to get, you know, a certain quality of woman in my life, before I was able to do anything, I had to shift my mindset, bro, um, and understand that where I came from and the stuff that I went through did not dictate where I was going to end up at. And I feel like a lot of people need to know that, and they need to know that early. It's gotten to the point where I've created a, a program that I, you know, go to CPS schools, Chicago public schools, mm -hmm. and talk to kids about the importance of mindset and how their mindset can pretty much, you know, dictate whether they're going to be successful or unsuccessful starting at an early age. Mm -hmm. I knew at a young age that even though I wasn't in the best circumstances, even though my parents were affected by drugs, even though we were from the projects, even though, you know, we had to get assisted, you know what I mean, by the government, all these different things, like I knew there was something greater 
always felt like this, even in the worst times, like, man, I'm going to make it out of this. It's something greater. It's something greater. Like, I know who I am. Like, there's a gut feeling in your, like, you know what I'm saying? In your heart, in your stomach, where you know, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm bigger than this. I'm better than this. I'm supposed to be doing something amazing. And when you have that mindset, bro, there's something in you that will not let you chill until you get it. You get what I'm saying to you? And that's what Mindset Matters is, man. It's a way of thinking and a way of behaving and a way of moving that lets you know, regardless of what's going on around you, as long as you keep a positive mindset, you're going to get there and you're going to make it and you're going to be successful as long as you keep that positive way of thinking. And that's why mindset matters more than anything in this world because you can be a bum on the streets. Have you ever seen the movie Pursuit of Happiness? Of course. That man had the strongest... Mindset going through the worst shit in the world. Mm-hmm. Well, it'd have been so easy for him to break. Mm-hmm. And what did he do? He stayed strong. He stayed down until he came up. That's it, bro. And that's what mindset it is, bro. Stand down until you come up, knowing that regardless of what's going on, where you are, there's always gonna be some better out here for you as long as you pushing. My guy, Andre Haynes. What way to close <laughs> out, family? Let the people know where they can find you. This is your camera right now. Yeah. Talk to them about whatever it is that you have going on and how they can tap in with you. Um, I'm at Renaissance One Two Five on all you know social media platforms: Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. You name it. Um, again, I got the brand Mindset Matters. I have merch. I have a book. Renaissance's Five Step Guide on Getting Your Shit Together. I have a private mentoring community called The Real Ones, man. If you're a real one and you're looking for a real one to teach you and get your, you know what I mean, real estate game and order your credit game and order financial literacy game and order, man, come join my community of real ones. We're a bunch of real ones and we keep it real all the time. And um, in addition to that, man, I got courses and I'll be speaking at Invest Fest, man. So, come on man, now. Yeah, listen, well, I mean, man. by the time it came out, you would have already yeah, spoken. Yeah, I, I messed that, right. <laughs> Invest Fest will already have happened. But listen, I'm going to be doing way more stuff. This is just the beginning, man. So check me out, like I say, across all social media. Yeah, Renaissance 125 and Marvin. Appreciate you for having me Always, on, bro. bro. Side note, you don't got an affiliate link with, with NACA? Man, bro, be, that's robbery. Bro, <laughs> that's robbery. So listen, so listen, this is how I run a play with NACA. Um, so NACA knows everything that I do. NACA is a non for profit. I'm not technically supposed to be gotcha. out here doing what I'm doing. Like, gotcha, I gotcha, pretty gotcha, much gotcha. created a brand gotcha. off of their brand. Mm-hmm. Like, my brand is actually bigger than their brand. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but they know that. If it wasn't for me, they would not have as much traffic as they have right now. Facts. You get what I'm saying to you? So I talk to the people, all of that. They're a non for profit. They're like, man, we can't necessarily pay you, but we ain't going to get in the way of what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like I, how I explain it to people. It's like how Batman is in Gotham City with the police. <laughs> it's like, like, yeah, we, we don't really like how you go around beating people up and hanging the criminals from the trees and stuff like that, but we're not going to stop you because you're helping us right, at right, the same right, time. Right, 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 right. Like you're, you know, the way you do it and your procedures ain't necessarily, you know, the best, uh, the best or our standards. But it makes it what it works for us. It works for us and it helps us. So there you go. We're gonna act like we don't even see what you're doing. There and you go. Just keep on doing your thing, Mr. Haynes. My guy, <laughs> Andre Haynes, ladies and gentlemen. My guy, Andre Haynes, at Renaissance underscore 125. Renaissance 125, no underscore. Renaissance 125, no underscore. And I thank each and every single one of y'all for tapping into this episode. And if you haven't already, what are you doing? Listen, take a second, take a minute, take an hour out of your day right here, right now. Just go ahead, slap the like button, show this episode some love. Make sure you leave a review and tap it with my guy, Andre, and all things NACA. This is the guy to go to, all right? And if you haven't already, y'all, make sure you continue to show the pod some, some love as well. But as always, I'm Marvin Francois. That's my guy, Andre Haynes. Y'all have been good. We've been great. This has been amazing. And as always, thank you and God bless. Peace.